And if we surrender to God, because surrender is powerful, if we because we're holding on to being controlled. But God is, is if you let him like the puppet, release the string and let God dangle the goodness and mercy and, and, and joy and kindness, you can just relax because he's in control and he's always going to do the, you always going to get the best from God, always. Welcome back to the Live, Love, Lead podcast, a podcast designed to help you live, love, and lead well. I'm your host, April Nicole Scipio. As always, what a pleasure it is for you to be spending time on the podcast today. And I know you will be so excited that you did because we are just so excited to hear from a amazing friend of this community, Dr. Cheryl Hardy. Um, she is not new to this community, guys. She has been just investing and pouring and sharing, and we're so grateful. But if this is your very first time jumping in on the podcast, I can't wait for her to introduce herself to you and for you to join our community. Um, if you have not already plugged into the Live Lovely community on Facebook, we invite you to do that. We are a group of women. We're building authentic friendships centered around God's word, and we're excited about it. Today's conversation will be absolutely phenomenal. And so with that, Dr. Cheryl, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I always say it's an honor. It is such an honor to serve God's people. And I'm excited to be here. And thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. So Dr. Cheryl, if this is someone's first time getting to meet you, please introduce yourself. To let us know who you are, what you do. And just anything that God lays on your heart. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So my name is Dr. Cheryl Hardy and I am a counselor and I'm a proud counselor. I often say, and you, and if you, if this is your first time, you'll be, this is your first time hearing this, but if it's not, I am God's ears on this earth. I am here um, ordained by God to hear the people's story because there's a lot of hurting people in this world. And that's what I do. I'm a counselor. I've been a counselor for over, I've been in the helping profession for over 40 years. I've been in private practice since 2009 and I love what I do. Yes. And it shows that you love what you do just from the wisdom that you just share. And as a community, like we're so thankful and I'm specifically excited about today because we're in a, a series on the podcast all about the fruit of the spirit. And I, and I know that today we're digging into self-control. And even as I say it, I almost feel people going, wait, 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 like, oh, <laughs> self-control, like it's the one we don't like to talk about so much, right? Yes. Because um, it requires sometimes to do things that are uncomfortable and say no to ourselves. Like, wait a minute, wait. <laughs> so... I would love just to hear from you when we think about self-control, how would you describe self-control for the believer? What does that look like? Ooh, for the believer, that's a great question. Um, self-control for the believer is to pause and listen to the wisdom and the direction from God. And how can you do that is when you are behaving godly way for your lifestyle and and the fruit of the spirit those are great instructions you know having joy and kindness but self-control sometimes i notice when we read that and i notice in in the church setting or in groups we'll just go by self-control real quick and the fruit of spirit self-control and then we'll go to that but self-control is, is work and you need to sit down and pause and just evaluate yourself because there is a part of us that can be out of control at any moment. And being in self and being in that space where you can control yourself, that's a part of emotional intelligence. And Jesus was a highly emotionally intelligent person. 
you know, when he met the woman at the well, he did, and she, you know, you and they was having they to talk, and it was five. And he said, You have five, and the one you with is not yours. He didn't say, Listen, you know, you got five, and the one you with, what's I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> but he used that self control and that emotional intelligence and just share with her, you know, you can have everlasting life you can have a better life you don't have to be mixed up with all different types of people and men and personalities but you can have that self-control you know and so he used that emotional intelligence and how can we use that as christians is allow that sit still and pause and evaluate before you react you know that i think that is so important that's so good. I love how you talked about pausing and evaluating because if we're honest, we don't do enough of that. Like myself, even myself, like I think that's, you have to be so intentional, intentional. to actually do that, but that's so important. And when we do that, Dr. Cheryl, how does that translate into a daily, like an everyday thing? Like how do we do this daily walk of self-control. And so the daily walk of self-control is being intentional, being, I, I always say, sprinkle it up, give yourself some grace and compassion and move at a pace. Because when you move at a pace, you're intentional. When you're moving so fast, you can be all over the place and you can react all types of ways. So in your daily walk, if you're being intentional and move at a nice pace and whatever that pace is, slow it down a little bit more. Because, you know, what I realized is I, I heard um, the late Dr. Um, Fred Price here. He said, Christians move at 25 miles an hour. So they have longevity in their lives. Whereas the world moves fast, like 75 to 100 miles an hour, and they move so quick till they wear themselves out. And so I thought that was such a great way to share that. If we move at a pace and slow it down and be intentional, we'll be in control, you know? Because sometimes, this is what I was thinking, April, um, when you become angry, if you give yourself six seconds, the rational part of your brain are, are, are start negotiating with the other out of control side of the brain. The left side is the logical side and the right side is the creative side. It'll give you a chance to bring it down. Six seconds, research based. I know people are going to Google it, but give yourself six seconds to bring it down and it could, it could change your, your life. You know, wow. it can take just six seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And this is intentional. And whoo, the cops won't come. I won't go to jail. I won't spend extra money. <laughs> you know, yes. self-control saves money. Self-control wow. saves relationships. Self-control wow. saves families. Self-control increases love. Self-control brings calmness. To the situation. Self-control is so powerful. Wow. Oh my goodness. You talk about the pace. That's huge. And then the payoff of yes. having that self-control and and what that can mean for your life, for your family, for your finances, for your business, for your children. Mm -hmm. But yet we are sometimes so quick to think about the moment instead of the future. And I wanna ask you this question. So when we think about self-control, not reacting, not being in the moment, but, but pausing and really allowing that God to kind of dictate that pace for us. In your experience, how do we get to that level of intentionality? Because Dr. Cheryl, I have not seen many people who do that. Like they say yeah. that they know that, but they, to go from knowing it to actually the application in their life, what is it going to take for people who's listening? If they say, Dr. Cheryl, yes, I agree. How do I do that? Because I'm so used to just going, 
or reacting? What's our first step? The first step I would say is to, if you can incorporate the traffic light in your head and stop, red light, stop, yellow light, pause, and then go, that would help tremendously. Just something just as simple as that. That's a simple tool. Um, think about, if you can think quickly about what will happen if you react, that can bring you down too, because when you're out of control, it can tear up. It, you know what? We, we saw a situation happen not too long ago of an out of control situation and it digs in your pocket. Sometimes the whole, a whole community stop talking to you because of an out of control reaction. So if you can think it through and just think of the red light, green light, red light, yellow light, green light, just pause before you react. And that is in many situations. That's in relationships with spouse. That's parents. You can be so frustrated at work. And then you can have an out of control thought. And your child could come in and spill the milk. And you just flip out. You're, you're out of control. You're out of control. is not their problem. It was just an incident that occurred. And so we have to just practice. You have to be intentional because that's how we, when we read about the fruit of the spirit, that's why we skip it because it's one of the hardest things to <laughs> do is to be in control. You know, sometimes you're sitting and listening to somebody and those thoughts will come, those out of control thoughts, you know, and they are talking, you're like, oh, won't, you, won't they be quiet? Oh, I'm tired. Oh, there we go with that. You know, that self-control on the inside is just going all over the place. We have to practice learning how to calm ourselves down because the body is like, it'll, it'll just go, your thoughts will go, your reaction, and it's not a good payoff when you're out of control. Yeah. I, I love the Lord. And when you were talking, the Lord in his kind voice just whispered to me the words, surrender. Mm. And I'm of course I'm like, okay, God, what do you what do you mean? <laughs> wow. And he just explained to me that when people, the reason why people are out of control is because they believe the lie of the enemy that they're in control at that moment, but they're not. You're not. There's a situation that happens and they think their response, their reaction how they're handling it right away is them taking control. They want to hold on to the situation and control what happens, everything to be on their terms. Oh, that's but cool. that's so deceptive because no, when we try to step into being in control, we're really out of control. And God's like, if you want to truly really operate in a life of self-control, then you're going to have to operate in a life of self-surrender. Oh my goodness. That literally that's, that's the time, this is I'm processing this in real time. Literally, God just as you were talking, literally, God just downloaded that to me. Seriously. And if we surrender to God, because surrender is powerful. If we so because we're holding on to being controlled, but God is is if you let him like the puppet release the string and let God dangle the goodness and mercy and, and, and joy and kindness, you can just relax because he's in control and he's always going to do that. You always going to get the best from God always. Yeah. And so that's powerful. Yes. We, that's surrender. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a yeah. whole lesson right there. I know. Uh, <laughs> that's a like whole the, lesson. the power in that though, like what we're saying today is, the importance of self-control and often people skip over it because number one, maybe they don't understand how to do it or they just are choosing not to be intentional with it. But either way, we have to come to a point in our lives where we say, God, I'm surrendered. I'm not going to be led by what I think. I'm not going to be led by my emotions. I'm not going to be led by past experiences or hurts. I'm not going to be led by you fill in the blank. I'm only going to be led by the spirit of God. Like my, I'm making the quality decision today in my life to only be led by the spirit of God. And that truly comes from a place of surrender. So if the audience could, could practice that, 
when things come upon them, if you can do the red light stop, I surrender, pause, yellow light, I give it to you, God. Green light, I'm going forth in his word and his promises. You can't lose. Praise God. You can't Praise lose. Praise God. That's so Praise good. God. That is so good. You lose. Wow. You will be fine. You will be fine. We have to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not mm. lean to our own controlling understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge God. Okay, God, I will need you to come in. I'm acknowledging you. And he yeah. will direct every path in your life, work path, home path, relationship path. Mm -hmm. He will direct you. And that is powerful. I surrender. God, I surrender all to you. That's that's yeah. how cool you are. That's how amazing you are. Right? Yes. God, God had this. And yeah. so, because at the end of the day, you're not in control. God is mm -hmm. in control. Yeah. And when, he, when you use self-control, when God is in control, he'll just give you, he just drop nuggets in you. Yeah. I surrender. Give yeah. it up. Stop. Pause. Glean on him. Rest in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wait patiently upon him because yeah. he's he going to give you strength. He's going to strengthen your heart. Yes. Oh, that's so, so good. So good. As I'm sitting here thinking, like the listeners wear so many different hats, Dr. Cheryl. Mm. Some are moms, some are spouses, business owners, leaders. Um, children, if their parents are still living, you know, we, we fall into so many different categories, yet we all still need self-control where we don't, we aren't exempt from it. In your professional experience, in your opinion, as you think about all the different hats everyone wears and the different pulls and stresses that come with each one. How do we truly utilize the word of God as a tool to help us stay grounded as we're, tr we're on this journey of surrender and self-control? It's like you mentioned the, the example of the, the mom maybe yelling at the child from a situation mm -hmm. that happened at work. It's like, how can someone be, you know, sometimes we can be self-controlled at work. We hold it and hold it and hold it in. Then we go home and we unleash it on the people we live with that have nothing to do with the situation at work or vice versa, your home life, you stuff, stuff, stuff it in. Then you go to work and you just like, how do we balance? How do we manage this surrender and this self-control in the various lanes that we live in that come with different degrees of, of stress? And that is so good because that can be so difficult and challenging sometimes but I think if we evaluate our lives, I think if you set a plan in the morning and have a goal and when things are out of control, because you have a plan, you won't you won't go off too far off it because it's something about the Lord. He'll bring it back to your remembrance. So so if you could plan three things that you're going to do that day, you know, you're going to you're going to set a goal. You're going to. um be still. You're going to evaluate your day. And if anything is out of control, you're going to pause and just let it slide. You know, just if you can, just let it slide because um, it's just too much. Sometimes you become overwhelming and then allow help. You should have help. You know, if you're if you're a single mom, sometimes you if someone say, I'm going to take the children, let them take let them take the children. You trust them. Let them take the children for a few hours so you can gather yourself. If you're a busy wife and your spouse or a busy husband and, and the wife, if someone says, I'm going to do the laundry, let them do the laundry. If you need somebody to come, come with cleaning service, let them get all that helps with self-control. All that helps because we need community and, and we need people. And trying to do it all by yourself sometimes, sometimes pride get there. And you said, I'm just going to do it all by myself. I can do it. You know, I could bring, I can fry the bacon, you know, put it in the pan and let you know your man. But <laughs> you, know, you don't have to prove that you're a woman. You, what you're proving that yeah. you are, you, you are, 
fearfully and wonderfully made, and you are amazing. You're beautiful, hand designed by God. So use the tools that you have if you need help. Mm-hmm. Get that help because this is it helps with self control because you'll be out of control because you're so tired. Mm. And so that's one of my my that's what I, I think that's because I see that a lot in in um in sessions. I see that people are so burnt out because they're trying to do everything themselves and they say in their head, I don't need anybody, I can do this. But we do, we do, yeah. we need people. Wow. That is so good. I love that because even in my own life, in the mornings, I have to pre-decide some things, like pre-decide to forgive because Mm. when someone wrongs you, it's hard to forgive in the moment. It's hard. Like in the moment, who wants to forgive in the moment when you're mad, right? But because we pre-decided. So we can pre-decide that this day I'm going to pause We can Mm -hmm. pre-decide I'm going to be still. We can pre-decide I'm going to wait the six seconds. We can pre-decide I'm going to use the stoplight. We can pre-decide if someone offers help today, I'm going to accept it. I love that, that that planning ahead and pre-deciding. That is so, so, so powerful. It's so good. And and, and it keeps you intentional. You're, you're, you're intentional. You're focused. You're setting goals. You have a plan. Um, I think everybody should have a journal. You know, it is so important. It keeps, it, it, it increases your brain. It increases your thinking power. And it also sets you up for, you know, if you, if you wake up in the morning and say, today's going to be a good day, things might happen during the course of the day, but that is, it's going to be a good day because you set that in order, you know, yeah. now that's something that you can control being intentional and walking by faith. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So good. Dr. Cheryl, I want you to pray for the listeners today, but before that, I want you to tell everyone about your journal because I feel like it's so appropriate and people are listening to this and they need a resource. They need a tool. I know you have created. Yes, you, I thought I had it close by. Uh, that's okay. I want like, if you are listening to this, watching this, I want y'all to get this journal um, because Dr. Cheryl is right. Just having a place where you can get your thoughts out and love on yourself mm. is so important when it comes to self-control. How many people are out of control and the root is that they truly don't love themselves? Oh, that's good stuff. That is so true. You know? Yes. Tell us about this journal. I'm so excited for everyone to get it. Y'all go get it. Go grab a copy of it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So I I wrote this journal, Rebuilding a New You, a self-care journal. And this journal, and what I love about the cover is the cover is about a building, rebuilding you so you can level up daily oh you got it right there so you can level up but in while you up in the air and you leveling up you might be up there and things might get messy at the top but the sun is still shining Mm. and it's really okay and in the journal i talk about um so and and you have to do the you have to do the work but self-worth you're worthy of self-esteem where's your esteem how are you doing how are you feeling how well do you love yourself um Mm -hmm. self-determination so it's a list of i call it list of selfies it's a list of selfies so you can work on you and um please think about getting it because it is a great journal and and so funny i just put it to the side i was looking at april like where's my but i work in it myself every morning (laughs) And um, yes, yes, a journal is amazing. It helps you focus. And also those affirmations, you know, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am amazing. When God made me, he made something, he made somebody. And when you think better of yourself, you work better, you do better, you make money better, you enjoy life better, you are healthier, you know? And so, yes. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl. I love that. We're talking about self-control today. And a good step for people to do is number one, focusing on that surrender piece and then focusing on the self-care piece. I love that so much. Please, please pray for everyone who's listening to this. And they 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 want this for themselves. I know 
people are listening to this and they're like, you know what, as I'm listening, I know that God is speaking to me about this area, about this fruit of the spirit specifically. And I know that God's developing this in people. And sometimes that development is uncomfortable. (laughs) Yes, self-control is uncomfortable. (laughs) Please pray a prayer of blessing over us today. Yes. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time, this connection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the people that's listening. Father, I pray that you touch them from the crown of their head throughout their entire body. Touch them mentally so they can think well, physically so they can feel well, emotionally so they can feel well, and financially so they can spend well and be be just walk in wealth and health. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this connection. God, I pray that you will touch your people all over the world and let them know that you are closer than the breath they breathe. You love them so much that until you died on the cross and gave your life for, for us. We are so grateful for your love. What greater love than this, than, than a man laid out his life for me and for you. So God, take care of your people all over the world. Take care of them in every area of their lives and let them know that you love them. You will not push them away, but you want them as close to you as possible. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your love. And this I pray in Jesus' wonderful, matchless name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Cheryl. Guys, thank you for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it. We know that you have been served and blessed and we want you to just be resourced. That's what this community is about. We want to equip you to live, love and lead well in your personal life and your business. So head over to Amazon to grab Dr. Cheryl's journal. I will make sure the link to that is in the show notes of this episode. Grab it, do that for yourself as we are allowing the Holy Spirit to develop self-control in us. We love you and we will see you soon. Until then, go live, love, and lead well. Have a great day.